you can get a really nice bead. It doesn't need to be a big bead, but it needs to be obviously smaller than a caterpillar, but certainly not as big as your pinky. Hi guys, welcome back to the JPM Performance Channel. Today we're going to talk about how to seal up a Miata oil pan properly so that you don't have leaks. And uh, I get a lot of people asking me or telling me how much trouble they've had with changing their oil pans because it's mainly silicone down. You've got a couple of wedges in the corners. Um, it's very easy to do it improperly and not really get it sealed up. You know, this is not an old British car. It's a Miata. It shouldn't leak. So how do we seal up our pan properly? Let's start with what we're going to put inside the pan on this project. So, as you can see here, we have a standard Miata oil pan. We don't have the baffle in it yet. This is the stock baffle, which does a pretty good job. But as you can see here, there are a lot of gaps around the edges. And when you have gaps like this, especially in a racing situation, as you hit the brakes, the oil can slosh up the sides, the front, the back, and it will get away from your oil pump pickup. This pick oil pump pickup here that goes to your oil pump sits down in the pan right here. But with all of these open sides, the oil can slosh away from your pickup and you can have an oil starvation issue. So years and years ago, came up with this oil pan baffle now this is something that you can buy from Mazda Speed Motorsports um, very easily. They're about $40. If they don't have any in stock, you can always call me or message me or email me. I always keep these in stock. Now this one has been in this pan before. When you get it, it'll be flat. You can see it's a snug fit. When you get it, it'll be flat. I've bent this one up a little bit on the front so that it sits down in the pan properly. So this seals up all of our sides and our edges. Then you simply take your stock baffle, stick it on top, and that will hold it down. So what we're going to do here is we're going to start by installing this. And it uses these five very short six millimeter bolts. I would suggest a drop of blue Loctite 242 on each one of these. Just a drop, doesn't take much, but without a lock washer and being in a, in a condition where it can, um, obviously it gets hot and cold as the motor warms up, you can run into a situation where, you can run into a situation where these bolts can loosen up. So you just put a little drop of Loctite on each one And the stock baffle plate will hold the new baffle plate, the performance baffle plate, in place. Now I've proven this on the racetrack time and time again by logging oil pressure. This will decrease your oil pressure drops by about half. So as I go along here, I'll give you a couple of tips. You can see I was using the little cordless impact. I just use that to run it up. I always use hand tools to finish the tightening. Now when you've been doing this as long as I have, you kind of know how tight you can make these. If you want to know a torque spec for something like this, it's about 11 foot-pounds, 10 or 11 foot-pounds, which computes to about 125 inch pounds um, so just if you know what you're doing you can kind of you can kind of see how that fills it all up you can get your bolt tightened down so there we have a really good oil pan ready to be installed the other thing Mazda did is they have these stock baffle plates which sit in here actually sit in here like this so I'm looking at it upside down 
And what this does is as the oil whips around inside of the engine, it slows the travel of the oil down into the bottom of the pan. So that does a couple of things. Prevents some of the sloshing and also gives the oil some time to de-aerate because when oil is whipping around in the bottom of your engine, it gets very, very aerated and that can cause all sorts of trouble. So we are about ready to start siliconing. We have our new wedges here. Now one of the little tricks I want to show you guys is this little squeeze tool. You know, if you're trying to use silicone and you're trying to squeeze these things, you know, they can really become a problem to get a good bead out of the top. This tool does two things. It gives you control over the amount of silicone coming out, and it also gets all of the silicone out of this tube. And I have one for my ultra gray and I have one for the clear. You can see here, it's called the Tube Grip, made by Valco Cincinnati. And there is their, their two phone numbers. I would highly suggest that if you ever have some silicone tubes like this, you get these. They're a great tool. So, if we get a little bit closer here, can really get an idea of what's going to be going on in this process. There's no gasket here. All we have are these wedges. One for the front and one for the rear. Now I've seen people put them on like this dry without putting silicone underneath. In my opinion that's a mistake. You need to have silicone all the way around, then these need to be installed, and continue. So what we'll do is we'll go through the process here of how I like to do this. And for anybody that has had one of my engines, they can attest that my engines do not leak. So you can get a really nice bead. It doesn't need to be a big bead, but it needs to be obviously smaller than a caterpillar but certainly not as big as your pinky we just work our way around you can see the control that I have with this tool makes a big difference also helps if you have steady hands We'll run that same bead up and over where these wedges will go. Finish in the corner. So our thinner wedge goes in the back. You can see a little bit of silicone will push out, which is fine. And our thick one goes in the front. But the first thing we need to do is put our baffle plate on. So that sits here. Just like that. There's a couple other places that I would suggest a little dab of blue Loctite. One would be on this nut right here, and secondly would be on these bolts that hold the pickup tube down. In racing conditions, all of this stuff can loosen up. So we have a new gasket here for the oil pump. So you can see how this baffle plate kind of lifted up a little bit. These things, especially if they've been out of the engine, tend to kind of get a little warped and a little out of place, but that's okay. As long as we've got our silicone in place, when we go to put the pan on, it will tighten down properly and there will be silicone where it's needed. So now that that's been installed, we need to put a little bit on top of each one of these end wedges. Call them end wedges, some people call them half moons, 
call them whatever you want but you want to put a little silicone on those and you also so one of the other things that I do as I get a little closer I will move up and I like to bend this up this is completely empty you can see how thin it is it's really a good way to utilize every bit of the silicone in the tube so the same bead on top of the baffle plate as we did under the baffle plate and this isn't a super technical complicated process but if not done properly you can have one little spot where your oil pan will leak and it will drive you crazy because you cannot honestly you can pull either lift the engine in the car or drop the subframe but it's really really hard to get these oil pans off in the car so this is really an important part of this so we're silicone tops and bottoms on those tops and bottoms on the baffle plate here our oil pan is ready these are both these are all tight so we simply slip our oil pan on there are two pins, a little pin in the back on this side and a dowel pin on this side. So once we have that started, what I like to do is just start sticking my pan bolts in. Sometimes, you know, because that baffle plate's a little, a little warped, a little hinky or whatever, you just have to kind of force them a little bit, but it, they'll go. Try not to drop your <laughs> try not to drop your oil pan bolts. So this is another spot where I'll use my little cordless snap-on gun here just to kind of get these started. Just go back and forth, working it down. Obviously, you never want to tighten every one of them down until you get them all started. So I'll just get them all started with this. So once I get them all kind of most of the way down, I'll just start working my way around a little at a time. What you're going to see is you're going to start to see that silicone squish out a little bit on the sides. So if you've ever seen these huge, once again I'll call them caterpillars, if you ever see this big caterpillar sticking out on the side of your pan here, you can imagine that there's another big caterpillar on the inside of your pan which can get into your uh, oil pump pickup, cause a number of different issues. So that's why that small bead of silicone is, uh, is all you need. Um, to, to circle back just for a minute, what that is is what I use, and, and I think it's very similar to what Mazda always used. It's Permatex Ultra Gray. Of course, Mazda had their own um, version of it but Permatex Ultra Gray works great on these engines so we'll just keep working our way around here working our way around and you'll know it when you're getting snug I mean these are gonna be these only need to be snug just like those those bolts in the in the baffle plate they don't have to be torqued down to you know 30 foot-pounds and believe me if you attempt to torque them down to 30 foot pounds you will snap one off so if, if you're not really experienced in this get out your torque wrench and I'm telling you start with like 10 foot pounds and it's just a tiny little bit I mean it's not much obviously I can do this because this is probably my thousandth oil Miata oil pan I've installed but you can feel now it's it's not they're not really going down a couple of them are getting a couple turns but they're not really going down much anymore. So we're just about there. Of 
Maybe you're asking yourself, well, why didn't I Loctite those? Well, I can guarantee you that because of the silicone, when this bolt goes down through that hole and squishes out, a little bit of silicone will squish up into the hole here next to the bolt, and that will hold it as well. So we're looking good here. There's really nothing left to tighten. Go one more time around. And obviously you need to be a little, a little quick on this because you don't want your silicone to skim over and start to get hard. So we'll move fairly quickly. So to give a quick, let's have ourselves a quick close up on how much silicone actually squeezed out here. Not very much, just a little bit around the bead. And you can see here in the front, along where the wedge is, there's a little bit of a gap right there and right here. If we keep working our way around, we're looking really good here. We've squeezed out along the back. However, I don't like to leave it sitting like that. So, here's my technique. Wherever you see excess silicone, I've got an old nasty rag here. I just kind of wipe it and smooth it. Now, in the front, so I've got some ex extra silicone because it really squished out of the back. Along the front here, I like to take this extra silicone and kind of squeeze it up into this wedge area making sure that my corner wedge here in the front has plenty of silicone. But I also don't need a lot of excess running around the edge here either. So I'll just use my finger, clean it up real nice, and we're looking good. Now along the sides, I like to do the same thing. I just don't like the way that excessive silicone looks along the edge of the pan. And also, if there were to be any issues along the side here, that will seal up that, that seal right along where the pan hits the block. So I'll do that on both sides. Yep, and there is a little bit of wasted silicone here. But I don't want to leave this just looking like this, sitting, sticking out like that. You just clean it up a little bit. Let's take a quick look at how nice this looks. So now that I have cleaned up the sides a little bit, we have cleaned up our front corner wedge. We've got nice, now you can see there, there's one little spot there. Just wanna make sure it's really sealed up and looking good. Honestly, these corner wedge spots or where you'll run into the biggest issues. So we're looking really, really good. We're all sealed up back here. Now some of you are probably thinking to yourself, what about these long bolts in the back? For any of you that have done Miata oil pans in the past, you know they've got these oil pan bolts that run from here all the way down to the bottom here. Turn the engine a little bit so you can see. So it's this really long six millimeter bolt. Well, in racing conditions, because of the harmonics and the RPMs, it's very, very common for these bolts to actually break and uh, fall out. So then all of a sudden you don't have pressure back here. So what I do is I use these small six millimeter, millimeter Allen heads. So we'll shove these in here Not the easiest thing to get to, but a flat Allen head will seal up back here and keep the back of the pan tight. Now, initially I thought this was such a genius idea 
that I would just snug them up like that and leave it alone. Well, I had a situation where one of these broke. Maybe I over tightened it. I don't know, but it broke, got into the bell housing, jumped all around, beat up the flywheel, beat up the clutch. It just was not such a great thing. So I'll take a, just a tiny dab of silicone right along the edge. So if that tiny little Allen head, Allen headed bolt was to break, the silicone's going to be dried and it's holding from the pan to that head. So if it was to break, it would just sit there and it would not be able to bounce around. That's a little pro tip right there. Something I learned the hard way, but as anything in life, that's generally how we learn things. And these don't need to be super tight, you know, good and snug. It's not going anywhere. Silicone's going to do its job. The bolts will just hold it in place. Once the silicone dries, this stuff is super, super strong. Matter of fact, when you go to pull these pans off, pull all the bolts out, and you have to pry these pans off. Wouldn't surprise me if I let this dry for a week. I could probably pull all the bolts out, stick it in a car, and it would never leak and never fall off. So, kind of an interesting thing, but uh, that's the way I like to do that. And that is how it's done. Or, like I like to say, the way I see it. So, this way you will have a completely sealed up oil pan with no problems, utilizing Permatex Ultra Gray, a little bit of Loctite, and uh, make sure you get your baffle plate from Mazda Speed Motorsports. So, I will let this dry overnight. We're going to flip this over. We're going to do some compression testing next. Hope you guys have uh, enjoyed this how to seal up your Miata oil pan and not have a leak. It's super, super frustrating. You can get to cam seals and you can get to your crank seal. You can even pull the transmission and get to the rear main seal. But if this oil pan leaks, you're going to be hating life. So I hope this helps. Hope you guys are having a great week. Thanks for watching the JPM Performance Channel. And uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button because we do cool stuff like this every day. And you never know what you might learn. If you have a comment, please post on the bottom. I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. You guys take care. Thanks for watching.